This is Andromeda Independent Radio, the continuing sound of alternative radio, and uh, during the middle of the week... Isn't that terribly exciting? Here's a record for all the people in Loretta College. As soon as you're born, they make you feel small. I'm at the Ace in Brixton, and I'm sat with three people who are all, in some way or other, connected with uh, pirate radios. Would that be fair enough to yeah. say? No, we Absolutely. try to call ourselves community radios. All right, we'll call it pirate radios, know. just for a second. And um, we did invite another person to take part in this discussion, interview, advert, whatever you wish to call it. His name was the Right Honourable Timothy Raisin MP, the Home Office spokesperson for broadcasting. Unfortunately, Timmy couldn't turn up, so we're going to have to start without him. Um, I'd like to introduce you, first of all, to Steve. Steve, you uh, were actively involved in the Australian scene, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, uh, I worked for a couple of community stations in Brisbane for over the last four years or so. Uh-huh. Uh, is there any difference in the Australian broadcasting situation, what goes on over here? Well, there is in Australia what you could call, I suppose, a radio scene. I don't think there is one here. It's quite surprising, actually, that a, a city the size of London, with its exciting cultural, theatrical, musical scene, really doesn't have a radio scene that reflects um, the excitement that's going on in those areas. Um, for example, where I worked in Brisbane, um, which was a city of about 900,000 people, we had 12, there were 12 radio stations, um, three of which were community stations, three of which were government stations, and of course the remainder were commercial. When I first came over here, I was absolutely surprised, and, uh, to say the least, to find two commercial stations and the rest as government stations. Um, it seems to me that the scene here certainly doesn't reflect um, what's actually going on in the rest of, the rest of London, culturally speaking, M music, uh, entertainment, news, um, uh, theatrical experience, etc. Um, radio itself, as a cheap, easy access medium, seems to be um, a, logical, a logical extension of those sort of uh, areas, whereas uh -huh. here, of course, you don't have it. Um, some people would say that we have local radio in this station. Uh, we've got ILRs, independent local radio, and the BBC, which have their own local radio stations. Would you say that was true? No, they're, they're not, they're, they can't be called local. They're really regional stations. They, they don't cater for a local community. It's like advertising. They're running advertising, so they can't really cater for a local community. Uh -huh. Now, you work for DBC, Dread Broadcast Control, is that right? Corporation. Can I say that? Corporation. Dread Broadcast Corporation. I'm sorry. Yeah. Now, how is your situation any different from what's going on with the ILRs and BBC local radio? Well, we're not commercial for one, and we, we, send, we try to play music for, for black people, for specifically for black people. Reggae, soul, R&B, calypso uh -huh. music. Right. So why is, it, why is it important that you have this kind of station? Why is it important? Because it, it gives black people something to hold on to, makes them feel they've got something. Black youth, I know that for, for a fact. How no. do you know? You seem very positive. In what well, way? We get a lot of response, a lot of audience response. And it's just nice on a Friday night, you know, uh -huh. that's all we hear. Richard, would you say that the existing ILRs, independent local radio stations, and the BBC local radio stations, fill this role that Lepke has so brilliantly described? Well, no, I don't think so, because they're actually run by a group of people who are their shareholders. They're not run by the people who broadcast or the people who listen to these stations. And in the case of, say, Capital Radio in London, its majority shareholder is a standard broadcasting corporation of Canada. So the people who actually own the station live in Toronto. They don't even listen in London. <laughs> they don't even live in London and listen to what's put out on this uh, station. Uh -huh. And the BBC stations suffer a similar problem. They're run by a small group of bureaucrats and not by the people who want to listen to these shows or the people who want to make them. Uh -huh. Now you're involved in a group called Cradle. Yes. Two things. Could you first of all tell us what it is? And secondly, if it does anything, how will it actually do it? Well, it stands uh, for Community Radio Licensed Experiments. And Can we have that again? Just the cameras. Right, it's Community Radio Licensed Experiments. Cradle. Right. And yeah. um, what Cradle's trying to do is bring together various groups like pirate radio stations such as Lepke's here, um, community groups such as Poles who support Solidarity and people generally who are interested in broadcasting to set up different types of radio stations in London based on the models that have been very successful abroad. Mm -hmm. And we've had interest from, I said, large numbers of people and the GLC is thinking about backing such a scheme. Oh, that must be Red Ken. Well, it's uh, John McDonald. Oh, Red we, John McDonald. 
<laughs> no, I don't no, think... No, that's all right. We'll get that in the press one day. <laughs> but... Now, the idea is that it's non-profit making. Is that correct? Yeah, I think... I think um, you obviously you do need money, right, to run a radio station. If you're going to go on seven days a week, 24 hours a day, there is going to be some financial resources needed just to pay a minimum of staff to run it and for the equipment. Mm -hmm. And you can use things like advertising to support that. You also use contributions from the listeners, benefit gigs, perhaps even some grants from the GLC to run it. Mm -hmm. But I think the essential thing is that it's run by the people who want to listen to the station and who want to actually be on it. And therefore it isn't run, say, like Capital Radio, it's to produce a big profit Capital Radio, end. that's in tune with everything, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so well, it's in tune it's with Toronto, Toronto right. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just ask all you three one thing? I remember when I was a kid, right, I used to listen to the radio, Radio Caroline, out at sea, it was a pirate, etc. under the sheets, all fantastic, very naughty and sort of, aren't we having fun, you know. And, and I think, I get the impression sometimes that there might be that sort of, that sort of aura about pirate radio stations. You know what I'm saying? That it's, oh, you've got to listen to this one. It's all illegal. It's up the end of the band up there. But it's some wacky gear going on. You're going to love this. Why? Which is great for a lot of people. It's great that they can actually be alternative for a bit. You know, up there. Why do you want to go legal? Well, Lecky. No, can I just do it with Lecky? Why? 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 Because it's, it's so hard being illegal. You can't afford to keep losing transmitters for one. <laughs> you know, financially, that's killing everybody. Uh -huh. And, you know, it, it should be, the station like us should be on the air. There's no reason why. There's room on the air. There's enough spaces. As it's been proved in the film, quite right. obviously. Richard, you were going to... Well, yeah, I'd like to say the same thing. There is actually enough frequency space for wacky alternative radio and for, you know, radio that just serves groups who aren't heard. I mean, whether it be foreign language groups who live in this country and want to actually hear something in Bengali or Gujarati, yeah. or, it, or just to... You know, people who have other special interests, whether it be gays, women's groups, we can, oh. think, of, we can think of hundreds, you know. SM societies. <laughs> <laughs> Sue Fleck earlier on. Brilliant. I loved all that. But if, if you went legal, wouldn't you need some sort of governing body to control, or the allocation of frequencies, who gets what band in what area, etc. Well, I think et there's a confusion between a technical problem, which is dividing up the wave band between various groups who want to get on, Right, so you can't have more than one station broadcasting on the same frequency. Yeah. And the sort of political problem that's been presented, where they actually use this, Politics, need, yeah. this need to regulate you know, which station goes on where, to actually prevent people from broadcasting. They're frightened of the power of giving people so much speech you know, to a, a wide audience. They're frightened. Groups but, um, like, yeah, like black, imagine, so. imagine black people having a station. Yeah. It's just not, you know, unthinkable. Uh -huh. But they have black stations in New York. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. a revolution. All in America, why, you know? Yeah, why I mean, it's, it's unnecessary, really. Uh -huh. If they do legalise pirate radio stations, people are not going to run into the middle of the road, take their clothes off, make love and do heroin. They're not. They can switch off. No, well, they don't do it in America and they don't do it in Australia. Why <laughs> should they do, they do it here? Yeah. I'll give you the address <laughs> later on. <laughs> what I'd like to do is just take this opportunity, right, to remind you of something that I told you on last week's show. Now. We have actually got this little scene going in Leicester, the address of which I'll give to you at the end of this speech. And what it means is, is that you can write into the show, and this service exists to service your sort of desires, all right? If you want information about any of the subjects that have been covered, then you should write into this address. And there's a fellow there running a little business, an agency, whatever you want, and what he'll do is, and you must send a stamped addressed envelope, very important, what he'll do is, he'll give you the information, he'll actually return it to you, you should use it as a staging post. You can find out ideas, you can push on knowledge, etc., etc., etc. And what he'll be doing is sending you a booklet with all the information actually written into him and then dispersed to you people out there. The address is an address that you'll see later on in the show, but I'll just do it right now. It's whatever you want, P.O. Box 4000, Leicester, L-E-2, 3-D-T. That's whatever you want. P.O. Box 4000, Leicester, L-E-2, 3-D-T.